Good morning, folks. Like I said, I'm Larry Davis. I am the owner and marketing specialist for Fox Tracks. Fox Tracks, uh, I, we've been in business for about 20 years. Uh, we started life as a, com as a uh, commercial franchise printer. Um, we got into marketing probably about 10 years ago, pretty heavy. And uh, through that transmission, about a few months ago, we actually changed our name to our parent corporation, which is Fox Tracks. Now, I've been, uh, I've been uh, in marketing and direct response, uh, direct marketing since 1983, so you can do the math. It's a pretty long time, uh, even, even back before, uh, before, before we uh, got into the print business. That was my uh, out of college. I worked for a Kip company out of Italy. I helped introduce a uh, product line into the North American market that never was established before. So I had some interesting training uh, uh, grounds. Um, the, um, and so, uh, so after, at, at about that point in time, uh, owning a commercial print shop for 20 years, now I've probably have managed, I've managed and directed, designed hundreds of direct mail campaigns. But I have seen printed and come through our shop thousands. And that's, that's very, very valuable. That's a valuable thing to have because we get to see what works, what people repeat, what, what frequencies, what seems to uh, make their cash register ring. So I'm going to go into the nine simple rules of effective marketing campaigns. The marketing challenge. Here's the challenge. Every day now, your prospects, are going to, they're going to receive 1.85 million messages this year. That's a lot of messages. 5,000 per day. They're only going to notice 52, and they're only going to remember four of those. Besides that, we're all really busy, aren't we? Everybody's multitasking. I mean, there used to be a sales manager is now plain marketing manager, and the office manager is now uh, a graphic designer, and the person doing buying is also sweeping the warehouse. I don't know if it's that bad. <laughs> the thing is, is that the fact of the matter is we're all multitasking, so there's less of their time available to get your message. And the amount of information today is simply overwhelming. The universal goal of marketing, this is, this, this is it. It's getting the right message to the right person at the right time using the right medium. I mean, it's been said in millions of different ways, but I think this is the most clearest, the absolute clearest. Now, obviously, this guy down in the right-hand corner, he has to be one heck of a salesman because he doesn't have the right message to the right people at the right time, I don't think. But you know what? They always say that's how you guide a great salesman, right? So maybe he's doing okay. Here's a, here's a more complex uh, meaning for direct marketing. It's an interactive system of marketing that uses one or more advertising mediums to affect a measurable customer response or transaction at any location. And it stores that information about that event in a database. That's the complicated. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to share with you a tip today. This is Larry's guaranteed secret tip. If you really, because a lot of people always say to me, geez, I just need to get in front of that person. I got to get their attention. And so how do I do that? And I always say, I've got a method that absolutely 100% works 100% of the time. You, you take, you find yourself a brick. You wrap your uh, sales brochure around it, maybe even put your business card in it, and now you've picked out that ideal target, that ideal prospect you really want to meet, and you take and you throw that through their front window, wow. their office, their house, whatever. I guarantee you, they will know who you are, and you will get a response, <laughs> right? But it may not be the response you're really after. But our goal in direct marketing is to make that type of impact intelligently and hopefully not getting a call from the police department. Okay, everybody on, on with that? Okay. Here's, here's, the, here's the whole process. A lot of people uh, will go back and forth, which, where do you start? You know, do you start with the list? Do you start with the, who, building who your customer is? Uh, do you start with some, maybe some market research that you've purchased or done on your own? I believe that you for sure have to start somewhere on those two middles. Because the thing is, you can't really go acquire a database unless you're using an internal database. You can't really acquire a database until you really know who you're trying to reach and what your target is. And another point I want to make up is that a lot of times I start consulting with companies and uh, sometimes they're not sure who they are yet. And that is very, very important that they you figure that out before you go out and figure out who you want to meet. Okay? You've got to figure out who you are and really what industry you want to serve and what service you want to provide and what unique selling proposition you're delivering. The number one of our number nine is set your campaign's objectives. Now this is different than a, doing a design of a postcard where you're setting a target objective. I don't want to be confuse the two. This is the overall campaign objective. And these are just some examples of objectives. And I want to remind everybody what the difference now. 
a goal is like I am today. They, we want to land more sales, right? That, that's our goal. An objective, a specific objective, would be maybe some things like this. We're going to land more sales by, you know, maybe uh, visiting all four of the presenters' websites after this or getting to know us a little better. <laughs> but may, that, that might be one of your objectives. But the thing is, that's an objective. The same thing with strategy and tactics. Sometimes those two get mixed around. But objectives are the, are the steps that help you to that goal. You've got to define your target market audience. Specifically segment them. This is very, very important. I, uh, you, you need to drill down a little bit because if we're going to get really precise with our message and get really precise about anything we're doing, either inbound or outbound marketing, we really want to really know what, those, what the hot button is. And so, you know, you can have a general segment like women, but, you know, they could be, uh, there's, of course, there's lots of different variations besides small business owners. Let's say with small business. Uh, business owners, that would be there'd be a highly. So you want to break it down into their industries. You can use your existing data. That's very important. You don't always have to buy data. You, you probably have a world of data in your own office, but you know maybe uh, you haven't had a chance to organize it yet. Jill can help you with that. <laughs> but the thing is, is that you need to get that around that database because we want to look at, we want to break that down by their age, their gender, and their purchasing power. What are their buying habits? Their location. This is very, very important before we start a comp campaign. What's their proximity to you? What's the concentration? If you know there's a high, uh, let, let's say you're, uh, you know, you really want to make a big bang out of a marketing campaign. You need some results now. Obviously, you, we want to attack a high concentration of those prospects. And seniority. How, if, they're, if they're an internal list, how long they have been a customer or top prospect? A lot of times I'll, break, I'll help a client break these down to A, B, C, and D. And we'll just kind of break them up. And that's a long subject. We could spend a whole several hours talking about market segmentation, but I, I, uh, I, think it's, I think it's an important thing. It's an important exercise to go through. And who is your ideal customer? I mean, everybody always says that. Who is your ideal customer? Well, by doing some market segmentation, you can start to form spheres and start to form uh, you know, data cups, I call them, places where you see some commonarities where, these, uh, where, they, where they might who really tell you who they are. And this is the importance about using fresh list and doing this often. I'll tell you why. Because in the next two hours, 706 companies will have moved. 578 businesses will change their phone numbers. 120 new businesses will, this is, will open. This is in the United States. 40 businesses will shut down, and 10 companies will file bankruptcy. You see why it's important that your list be current? Determine the right media mix. I mean, you can have outbound. Like we're talking about direct marketing, we're going out, we're sending them something, we're calling, telemarketing, we're we'll driving an email blast where, you know, they, they didn't come to us, we're going to them. Or it can be inbound, you know, social media, a great website, SEO, we've got some great magnet, like a big magnet, we're, we're sucking them in, right? That's, that's inbound. A lot, of, a lot of agencies get really caught on this issue that these two are in contrast or fight with each other. They're like a battleground. I see these boxing gloves all the time when you simulate between inbound marketing, you know, web, print. The fact of the matter is, is that it's not a battle. In instead, it's, it needs to be a yin and yang. It needs to be harmony. It needs to be complete. Uh, you're, 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 every good marketing campaign really needs a mix of, of both the channels, I believe. Otherwise, you don't want to be like this little guy. I spend all my time creating content and I only have one lead. How many, how many have ever had, feel like that sometimes? You've been working on your online stuff, or your LinkedIn profiles, or your social media, and you know, working on maybe your own website, you haven't, you haven't uh, and you just, boy, I've been spending a lot of time, hours and hours on the computer doing this, but maybe you feel just like this little guy. I spent all my time creating content, and only have one lead. By the way, you can see it's not a very big lead. So. <laughs> Benefits of direct mail. It's a high attention value, highly selective, great, create, greater creative control. I mean, it's still physical. It's still like this brick. You can touch it. You can feel it. Yeah, that's, that, that's one thing that, that you can't replace direct marketing with actual physical um, material. You know, you're putting a postcard in their hand. You're putting a photograph in their hand. You're putting a brochure in their hand. You're putting a letter in their hand. Uh, greater creative time control, timing control. I mean, you can be very, very precise now with uh, IBM. You can with the uh, um, bar, with barcode uh, with barcoded mail, where we can do trackable barcodes. I mean, we can time these things pretty darn close. I mean, we can 
get something mailed out and have a telemarketing phone call follow it up in a, within a couple days and be accurate that the mailing's there. And one thing, it's measurable and it's projectable. And still today, 77% of consumers sort through their mail immediately. How many in the room sort through their mail immediately? So that's pretty, pretty close to that same percentage. Email marketing, still, I believe it's a very powerful tool. I, I am a firm believer in it. What I like to think, the simplest thing I like to, to point email marketing is, it's economical top of mind. Most likely, if you're doing it successfully, it's a highly opted in list, okay? They know who you are. They're expecting something worthy and relevant from you, okay? Or a discount or a coupon, something. They, 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 they know there's some value or they've got a great relationship with you. They know there's some value in your email. So even today, with the, when the box is full, 200 emails, they're still gonna open and read yours. So I, it's, it's very good economical top of mind. I don't think it's very good for prospecting. What is preferred? This is a new study out of the DMA uh, uh, convention last year. When evaluating product or services, they, they pooled 3,000 uh, small business, small to medium sized businesses, 69% preferred direct mail, 28% preferred email, 3% preferred telephone. They don't really want to be bothered on the telephone. If you are going to do it, you better make sure you're calling, uh, referring to something that, that, that's relevant and important. And 66%, this is important, want highly personalized offers. They want to know that you've done your homework and that you, you've actually sent them something that they feel that it's important that they see. I mean, they, they have to have some value on what you've sent them. 98% bring the mail in the day it's delivered. 77% go through their mail immediately. We already talked about that. 55% look forward to discovering the mail they receive. I don't know, I, well, maybe it's because of the industry I'm in, but I still like seeing my mail. I mean, how, how else are you gonna get your Rolling Stone magazine? So. <laughs> the power for business. Business people view job relevant mail as a resource. I mean, you get, they get good ideas. I mean, we're all looking for good ideas. Everyone in business every day is looking for a, a fresh idea. And sometimes you can, you can pick it from a competitor's mailing. You can pick it from uh, uh, maybe another industry that's not even all related to you, but you pick a little information from that mailing. And still you can title slug. And what I mean by title slug is that we've mined out really the person who you want to talk to, and we found, found that person in our database, and we're going directly at him or her. 24% of adults who read direct mail visit the store within 90 days. That's a retail point. That's not a bad thing. Customers with a catalog mailed to them, their average, their average uh, online purchase is $39. Customers without a catalog mailed to them, their average online purchase is $18. Does the catalog make a difference? Look at your major, uh, your major internet marketers. A lot of them are using catalogs. They believe it does. 80% of all U.S. adults have responded to direct mail sometime. And I think we'd, we, we, we'd find that pretty true if we checked this room. And even the new, the, the, and the, and the new young generation, I mentioned it in the article in New Business Minnesota, they, 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 they think it's really cool when they get something in the mail with their name on it because they've been so inundated with text messaging and emails, they've been so into their electronic world that they don't, they don't see something physically sent to them anymore. And they just, look, it's got my name on it. It's printed. It's on a piece of paper. It's pretty cool. The critical factors of direct mail, 50% is the list. That, that's, why that, that's why that research is so important. That your target is it's 50% of the success of a direct marketing campaign, whether it be email or mail. 20% creative, yeah, a lot of graphic artists think it should be there the way around, but I, I've got bad, and, I'm, and I do a lot of graphic art myself, but I've got bad news for you. It doesn't, it doesn't make nearly as big an big a impact on the success of the project as, as the creative. And 30% is the offer. The offer's got to be relevant. The message has got to be relevant. Uh, we, we do EDDM, and when, do, when does EDDM play in? Does everybody know what EDDM is? Every door direct mail. You can actually pick an entire route that you don't address it. It goes out in the mail. You get very low postage. You get high saturation. I still like this for retailers that are, that are location-based. New restaurant opening. I've had good luck with uh, auto repair. We've had good luck with hair salons. This is very, very powerful. It's, a little, it, it, it's, it's direct, it's big in its face. Look at the minimum size. Typically, I like to send out this, the six and a half by nine size. It, it makes big imp impact in the mailbox. It, it does work. Would I recommend it for a B2B client? No way. It's way, way too inefficient. Delivering the right message. Remember, be relevant. Again, I keep talking about that word, but it's absolutely important because it's got to matter what you're sending them. 
Response is the end goal of every word you write. Don't, don't, don't waste real estate. Char characteristics of a great offer. Highly perceived value to the prospect. Again, relevant. Simple, easy to explain. You don't got a lot of real estate. Whether it be in an email cover or, a, or on a postcard or on the front of an envelope, you're going to get them to read that sales letter. You don't have a lot of real estate. It's got to be simple and easy to, ex to explain. You have to deliver it with a sense of urgency. Some of the best uh, pulling uh, email uh, marketing ma mail campaigns I've done, we've, uh, we, we put a, an urgency statement on the envelope. It's got to be something time sensitive. We need, a, we need to get, get you to react now. And it has to appeal to your target audience. But if it's really well planned and really well designed, it'll appeal to your target audience, but it won't appeal to your unqualified audience. We got lots of ways to do that, but there's too many to go in <laughs> for this slideshow. Offers, what, you're, what you don't want to do. You don't want to offer too many choices. Keep it, keep, it, keep it focused on one or two ideas. You don't want to offer too short a deadline, because then they figure, oh, there's no way I can respond to that anyway, so I'm just going to throw it away. You want to offer too long of a deadline, because then they're going to stick it away in their file cabinet, and uh, they're going to forget that they put it in there. And you don't want to make an offer that is too good to be true. Because, uh, you know, we all, we're, all, we're all skeptics. Still today, and this holds pretty sh true for my agency as well, about 56% of what we do is traditional mail package. It's a letter, envelope, or, or maybe, maybe a dimensional mailing. 22.4% uh, are self-mailings, like a trifold or four pieces of paper that are tabbed together. Fifth, about 16% postcard, and then a large brochure mailed with a single tab, only 6%. The thing is, is that postcards are growing because they're low cost, but you get, you know, you got minimum real estate, but they, they're lower. Post codes are growing. The traditional uh, mails are dropping a little bit, but still, if we can get them to, if, if you've got a really great story to tell, and if we can get them to open the envelope, and we've got a well-written sales letter, you can, you can actually send, you can send along a little bit of your personality. You can maybe help to try to develop a relationship with a sales letter that you can't do with a uh, postcard. Dimensional or lumpy mail, I love this stuff. I mean, I did a campaign a year and a half ago for another ad agency hired us, and uh, we, had a, we had a campaign go out to the top executives on the auto industry, and we had a 100%, 100% response. Every single one of the manufacturers opened their box and went to the website to check out the software offer, 100%. So it's highly perceived. Now, there were a lot of tricks we used but that, uh, to get that open, but, <laughs> there, uh, but it can be done. It's highly perceived value. It, it is expensive. I mean, you get a nice d desk knick-knock-knack, knack, you're going to put it in a box, you're going to stuff it in a padded envelope. You know, you may, you may have four, five, six dollars a touch. But what are, your, what are you selling? What's the lifetime value of that customer? What is that phone call worth to you? If they, or they'll answer your phone call when you do a follow-up. Uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's very, very important. And I like, what I like about it is get around gatekeepers. If I know it's a box for you, and you've got a, uh, someone at the front desk who's opening your mail, most likely if they, if they feel it might be a box or something personal, which is why we got 100% by the little, little, give you a little hint what we did on that mailing to get 100%. But the thing is, is that if in, if in an event that it looks like it's something personal, probably an administrative assistant or a, a secretary isn't going to open it. They're going to pass it on to the person. Because it, be, you know, it might be something personal. <laughs> Identify the right time. What is your buyer in this buyer cycle? You know, that, that comes to knowing, really knowing who your customer is. When do they buy? I think Mark, Mark hit on that very, very well. I totally agree. That's very important. The timeliness of your buyer's needs. Put yourself in your customer's shoes. That's what it's all about. Trigger, response, or a purchase. How many touches do you people all, this is always the big question, right? How many times do I need to spend this money and mail this thing out till I'm going to get an ROI? It's a, every, everyone asks me that. It's a, every, every single one, <laughs> pretty much everyone asks me that. And you know what? And it's a, it's a complex answer. It's not an easy answer. But the fact of the matter is, I go to old Herman Hibbinghaus. Hibbinghaus. He, is, uh, he was around in the 1850s. He was a German philosopher. He was the first one who really did studies on human memory. And his, what, what he... Uh, what he, what he found and what he discovered in his studies still holds true today. It's still taught in most major universities. That we forget about 70% of what we learn within 24 hours. So, so frequency is important. I mean, uh, and you can see even as we go 19, even 60% in 19 minutes. That means before I even finish the talking here, you guys will forget what I, what I said. You probably even forget about the brick. <laughs> Got to include a call to action. 
Come on, you, we, we did the mining, we got the right audience, we, we got a compelling message, we got a nice design. It's, it's like going on a sales call and not asking for a close. You can't do that. No, no, no. You gotta, you, you gotta get them to, you want them to do something. Well, I'm just sending it out there so they know me. A lot of people tell me that. When I see a lot of direct mail come through that we print and we're not designing. So, well, geez, what do they want this person to do? Why are they sending them this postcard? I don't know, they, they're, they're, their logo's on there. There's a picture of their product. But that doesn't do it, a logo on their picture. What do you want me to do? What's in it for me? You gotta, gotta, have, a call, uh, you gotta have a call to action. And it can be anything, you know, join, a free white paper, visit our website, I love that. Like us on Facebook. Maybe you have a couple of those. Social media likes, I don't know if that's, I mean, if that, I've done some campaigns where that's our only goal, but, uh, but I mean, if that's not your only goal, we probably want to have a, a little, a little bit bigger call to action than that. Then we have to analyze those results. If you're not going to take and analyze what you've done, then don't do it. You got to measure because we need to know that we want to know the number of inquiries. That's why it's very critical that you know if we're if we're calling to your website, you better have Google Analytics running on your website, and you better be checking it because I want to know the the day that hits the mailbox. I'm asking the client if we're not managing that part of the campaign. I'm asking the client, what's your analytics look like? And they tell me, well, what, Larry? What, what, Larry, what, what analytics? Well, I said, don't you remember during our meeting we talked about website on your uh, analytics on your website? No. Look, the Ebenez Haas curve there. <laughs> Forgot about that. So, so, so we, have, we have to get them to speed. Well, let's, let, 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 let's get that fired up quick. Call your web guy and let's, let's get that turned on because we need to know how that's, how that's doing. Store visits, uh, event attendance, coupon redemptions. What worked and what didn't? Common measurement formulas, response rates, of course, cost per response. And then if you're literally looking at uh, conversion, then we're looking at uh, average how many dollars per order. Follow-up. This is another thing that I, this is an honest, I won't mention the company, but I ran a one and a half year program. An expensive program included direct mail, personalized URLs, we sent out individual URLs, drive into the landing pages. We had an email combination and marketing. And we were, we were pulling around 7.3% response. Now, if you know anything about direct marketing, it's a very, very good response. And this company was selling their average sale per transaction of their product was over $1,000, okay? The marketing manager and I were elated. The end of the year, my budget got pulled on the project. Marketing manager shocked, I'm shocked. We have lunch with the sales manager. Finally, we got him to tell us, I don't believe in any of that internet crap. We didn't follow up on any of the leads. That's what he told us. So, so the thing is, is that, and we, deli we delivered them to them I, around 377, 377 qualified leads. Thousand dollars. Now, if I'm the owner of that company, I, I'm, I'm getting a little concerned. I, I just lost out on 300, potentially, you know, 300 thousand dollars in sales. So. So yeah, you got to follow up, and that, you know, and that's where I think the telephone call. You you got to get over the, got to get some courage and give it a try. I know we just saw that only three percent of businesses will receive it, and if you're in B to C, it's a little sticky about calling someone at at night. But the fact of the matter is, is that I really think that um, you, I really like the telephone for follow up, and I really like the telephone for follow up if you're the owner or the salesperson who is going to be handling that account, because the thing is that gives you a little bit of street cred. Uh, you've now just sent them something. The timing is perfect. Hey, did you happen to ha notice what I sent you? Is there any interest there? Keep it low key. Don't 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 be too pushy. But the fact of the matter is, is that because if if nothing else, at least I hope you're going to look for this. Even if they tell you no, at least explore a little around for what I call pain points. Pain points are very very important it, to us as direct marketers, because on our next campaign. If we talk about this follow-up, we find out that, hey, you know, these, I think there's a common pain point here that we might be missing. Bingo, opportunity. Opportunity, what our next, what our next message is going to roll out to be. So follow-up is absolutely critical. And then nine, plan your next campaign. Because think, think of it like this. I use this analogy all the time. Marketing, whether it be web, print, or anything else, you can, if you're going, you can think of the marketing as a dry, desert, an arid desert, okay? 
And if you haven't been marketing before you're a new business or you took a break from the economy because you didn't have any money to market, <laughs> okay, that happened to a lot of companies, or they didn't think they had any money to market, so they, they, they crawled under their desk and they, oh, we're not going to spend any money on marketing. But the thing is, is now that, now that land is dry and now you need to grow something out there. Well, we build an irrigation pipe out there, that's what we're going to do, that's what we're going to do with marketing, and we're going to start the water flowing, okay? Now, it's going to take a lot of energy and resources initially to get that water flowing, right? To get, that, to get your word, get your compelling message out to that, out to that, uh, out to that targeted uh, list. But the thing is, those, those prime prospects. But once you got it flowing, it's okay to open and close the valve in increments based on your budget. Oh, okay, it's a bad time of the year or uh, we're going to close this up a little bit, but never shut it off. Because once you shut that valve off, it's going to take all that energy and all that resources to push that water back out in the field again and get things growing again. That's a mistake people make. You can't stop marketing. You, you need to do something every single month. And if you leave here, if I leave, give you one tip to leave here with today, that's very, very important. You've got to keep that water flowing because it takes way too much energy and resources to get it to flow again. To recap, define your market. Set your objectives. Determine the right media mix. Deliver the right message. Identify the right time, include a call to action, analyze the results, follow up, and plan your next campaign. Any questions or need help with any of this? You know, you, you, I hope, hope you guys will give me a call. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much, and I, and I applaud all of you for being here. It's absolutely beautiful outside, so I know you're serious about being here, so thank you.